All right, so I want to start talking about different types of uh, processes. Um, and the, the goal here is to learn how to evaluate uh, the work done and how heat flows in these different types of processes. And just to look forward, I mean, the, the talking about compression and expansion of gases, the application here is things like engines and, um, and refrigerators and so forth. OK. Um, all right, so let's, let's talk about a two processes I think I can squeeze into one short video here, which is isothermal and isobaric processes. And that, so isothermal refers to um, T is constant during the process, okay? And isobaric means that the pressure is constant during the process. So what I mean by T and P, I mean the pressure in the gas that I'm working with and the temperature in the gas I'm working with, okay? So let's start with the isothermal case. And so how can I do that? So what, what kind of process would be isothermal? Um, we'll use the piston as our standard example here. So if you take a, you know, a piston, a container with a movable um, piston here, and, um, but now I want to keep the temperature of the gas inside constant as I do stuff to it. Okay, the way to do that is to put it into what we might call a heat bath. Okay where you have a you know, large volume of something, could be water, at a certain temperature T. And the idea is that there's good thermal contact between these two systems. In other words, um, it's very difficult for the gas here to change its temperature, because as soon as it does, I've got this large body next to it that's at a lower temperature or a higher temperature and heat will flow to maintain an equal temperature. Okay, so if I were to change the temperature in here, um, T of the gas, um, heat will flow very rapidly out of the this water bath I'm putting it in, um, or this object that I have it in contact with, to until the temperature is back to temperature T. Okay. So we imagine that as we do this, heat will flow in order to keep the temperature the same always, to keep it at temperature T. For that to be true, I need this um, system, that, that this heat bath I have it in, to, have, uh, to be very large, or alternatively, to have a very large heat capacity. So that you know, I am, of course, going to take heat out of it or put heat into it as this happens. And so normally, that would change the temperature. But if it's a very large system, or has a very high, high heat capacity, I can take energy out with, with a negligible change in the temperature. Okay, so that's what I mean by a, a heat bath. Okay, and it could be, again, a, a physical bath, meaning you've put it in a tub of water. But it doesn't have to be that way. All right, so in, if this is true, the temperature will stay constant um, for all quasi-static processes that I... Uh, undertake using this um, uh, this gas okay um, now again a very important point is that in order for the temperature to remain constant there has to be heat flow okay um, so there will be heat flow during the process um, all right but if I maintain that the temperature is constant I know that the pressure I'm assuming it's an ideal gas the pressure of the gas inside is going to be um, I'll write it in the chemistry way again, nRT over the volume. And now everything on top here is constant. So if I want to evaluate the work done, okay, so take for example, I um, compress the gas, so I'm going to push in my piston, okay, so this is P versus V, I'm going to start at a certain pressure here, and I'm going to compress it until I get to lower volume. So I'm going to go from volume one, for the initial volume, let's do it that way, to the final volume. Okay. Um, now, because I know it's isothermal, I can actually predict what that final volume and pressure is going to be. Um, and it's going to be uh, lie on an isotherm. So that's where the, the temperature is constant. It's going to be like P goes like 1 over V. So if I take my initial condition um, and uh, it, will, it will lie on that isotherm when it starts, okay? And so this is an isotherm with T constant. Um, I'm going to follow that path up to my final point, okay? So the point 2. This is, again, as I compress the gas in the piston, okay? 
uh, and now I can actually integrate and find what the work is going to be in this case. Okay, so, um, oops, I went the wrong way. Okay. All right, and so um, the work uh, done, again, we take the point of view as the work done by the gas, and that's going to be the integral of uh, PDV from the initial to the final. And I can, again, write my pressure as NRT, which is a constant over volume integrated over volume, okay? And again, because this NRT is constant, I pull it out front, I get NRT, okay? And this is just going to be the log of the volume evaluated at the beginning and the end, okay? And if I rewrite that, I'm, I'm going to have log of V um, final minus log of V initial. I can write that as the log of the ratio of the volumes. So this is the log of the ratio uh, of the volumes, which will be VF over VI. Okay? So that's the work done for a process which is isothermal. I just need to know the starting temperature, which is going to be the temperature always, um, and then the change in the volume, and I have the work done. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So if the final volume is less than the initial volume, you see I get in minus work, okay? Because the, the, this logarithm will be log of a, a number less than one. <clears throat> and so the work becomes negative. Okay, if I don't change the volume, I get zero work done, okay? And if the volume increases, the work um, that's done is positive. Okay, now physically, again, going back, I'm thinking about this. This is work done by the gas. So if it's compressed, uh, I'm gaining energy. So the work that I do is actually negative. Okay, so the, the gas, sorry, I, I need to be careful. When I say I do, I mean the gas. Okay, so the work uh, that the gas does when it's being compressed is negative because it's actually gaining energy as it does that. But if it's expanding, the, the gas is doing work against its surroundings to push it out of the way. And so that should be a negative work from the point of view, uh, um, uh, sorry, a positive work, <laughs> a positive work from the point of view of the gas. It's, it's expending energy, okay? If it's gaining energy, it's a minus sign. If it's expending energy, the work that the gas does is positive, okay? All right, so that's the work uh, done in a, in a um, isothermal process. Now, keeping the uh, keeping in mind the the first law. So, what I'm going to find is that the internal energy change of the gas will be heat flow minus W. And as we just talked about, in order to keep this system isothermal, I have to have heat flow. Okay. Um, now, I can immediately tell you what that heat flow is because I know what this is, okay? The internal energy of a gas is only dependent on its temperature. So remember that it's just three halves times the number of particles times kT. Okay, so assuming the number of particles doesn't change and the temperature doesn't change, I know that for an isothermal process, I do not change the internal energy of the system, okay? The, the number, the kinetic energy, average kinetic energy per particle stays the same. Number of particles stays the same. There's no change in the kinetic energy, the, the internal energy. So I know that the heat that flows out in this case is equal to um, the work that's done on the system. Okay. So the heat flows out is equal to how much work I do um, in compressing it. Okay. All right, so let's move on and try to squeeze in one more type of process, and that's the isobaric process. So here I have pressure equal to const, a constant, okay? Um, that means the pressure in the gas as it's going through the process does not change. So let's give an example, again, with a piston. So let's consider a, um, a gas and a piston, but now let's have the piston just um, freely floating on the gas. I'm not pushing on it in any way. And so outside here, I have atmospheric pressure pushing down on the piston. And inside, 
I have pressure of the gas pushing up, and those are going to be equal. So in this situation where I have, I'm assuming that the piston is massless when I do this, okay? I'm assuming that the pressure is balanced, and so the, the, the pressure um, is the same as the outside world, the same as atmospheric pressure. Okay, but now if I consider a process where I, excuse me, where I put some wood on the fire, So now let me consider a process where I um, put some wood on the uh, underneath it and light it up and make a fire. Okay, and so what I'm doing is I'm injecting heat into the system, um, but I let this I keep this freely floating piston on top. So as the heat goes in, um, it's going to uh, allow the piston to be moved. Okay, and so as the heat goes in, the temperature is going to try to rise and the um, pressure is going to go up for that reason. Okay, and the, as the pressure tries to go up, it's going to push the piston upward. Okay, and it's going to keep pushing the piston upward until that motion, that, that expenditure of energy. So what I'm doing is the gas is now expending some energy to push that piston up. And that energy is enough to lower the pressure again inside the gas to match atmospheric pressure. Okay, that's where the, 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 um, the pushing will stop, is when it's back in equilibrium. So it's going to be back in the uh, force equilibrium with the atmospheric pressure. So P stays the same the whole time at atmospheric pressure, okay, as I input heat. But the volume is going to change, okay, and to compensate for that. All right, and so if I look at this process on a PV diagram... Um, I go from uh, point one here, okay, which is the starting volume, and here's my starting pressure. Now I know the starting pressure is the same as the final pressure. So as I um, put heat in, what I'm going to find is that the piston is going to be moved up. Okay, the gas will expand inside, but it's moved up at constant pressure to the final state, which is a state where you have um, more volume than you did before, okay, um, but the pressure is, uh, remains the same, okay, and so now I'm, I've got a process that uh, will give me a negative work because I, I'm um, oh, sorry, <laughs> a, a positive work, I'm going to have to get this straight in my head because I use a different convention usually, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in one way, but I'm going to try to stick to the books convention, the books convention is um, work is positive if the gas does work on the outside world, and that's what we have here. So I have a positive uh, work being done by the gas. It's moving to the right in the, po the process path. That's going to be a positive work because I'm expanding, and that's what's given here, and I can write it down right away. It's just going to be P times delta V, so V final minus V initial, okay? All right, so the pressure stays the same, um, but the uh, the the volume um, is not uh, change. Uh, the volume changes during that process, um, and it's because I've added heat to the system. Okay, um, so in the end, the the state the, the the state of the system once I'm done, if I want to find the temperature, um, because the volume is increased, so I have. Um, P is the same, but volume has gone up. Okay, this is again. This equation is true at any particular point along the path. Okay, um, so if the um, the volume has gone up, the pressure stays the same. That means that the temperature has gone up in the system. Okay, but effectively the density of particles has gone down. That's why the pressure can stay the same. So I have changed the internal energy of the system. I've put energy in and increased the internal energy. Um, and the input of energy has been the heat. But some of the heat gets lost in uh, work that the gas does in pushing the outside surroundings out of the way. Okay. Um, so that's the balance in this case. I do have a delta U internal because the temperature goes up. And I have um, heat that flows in as positive, and then I have uh, energy that's lost because I'm doing work on the outside surroundings. Okay. All right. Actually, let me try to squeeze in one last process, and then I'll move on. And that's the the isovolumetric process. 
and that one's very simple, which is why I added in. If the volume is constant, I've got a rigid box, um, then as I put heat in, there's no way for work to be done. So if I, if I draw that on a PV diagram, um, what I do is I start at state one, and then I don't let the volume change. So if I put heat in, uh, I know the pressure is going to rise inside. Okay, but the work done here is zero. Okay, all right. I'll end with that one.